Alright, in this video we're checking out the iFlight Bumblebee. This is our updated Cinewhip with the foam guards on the outside here. A little bit different design than the Mega Bee. I will talk about how it compares to the Diatone Taycan and the Mega Bee, which I both have a little bit later in the video, but of course I gotta go through the specs. Um, if you'd rather not have me go through the specs in future videos, let me know in the comments below because I would prefer to skip this kind of stuff because obviously you can just click the link in the description and look at the specs yourself, but I'll talk about them as I usually do. So this um, comes with 1507 motors at 3600 kV and I don't think it's going to come out too well on the camera here, but yeah, 1507, 3600 kV. Different motor size than the Taycan at 1408 and that does help with the flight characteristics. I'll talk about that later. Comes with these um, bull-nosed three-inch props here and they said that it, these are more efficient so you get better flight times with these. Um, they're just as noisy as the other props that the other um, Cinewhips use, so uh, I'm not sure if they are more efficient or not. They did do, they did show some testing of this on their Facebook page. It seemed like it was. Um, it, I think it is more efficient, but uh, the setup is more efficient more for the motors and the overall weight, and I'll talk about that later. Now, the design here is quite a bit different than the Mega B. You've got a, a unibody top plate and a bottom plate. Now the top plate and the bottom plate are a little bit different, but it's one piece. And obviously the bottom plate here has to hold the motor, so you got the spokes here, and then this 3D printer part for the duct that actually creates the shape for the way the air flows through here. It's supposed to be, I guess, kind of curved, but it feels kind of flat to me, like in terms of straight up and down. So I'm not sure if you're getting a, that uh, effect where it's going to increase the power. It just seems like it's a straight through um, duct. So. That's a 3D printed part here. We've got a bunch of standoffs that hold the top plate and the bottom plate and the ducts together. So with this design of all of these, um, I guess, standoffs holding the top plate on to get inside to the electronics, for example, it's quite a task. You have to take all the screws off from the top and then remove the entire top plate. So there's, I think, about eight screws or so. No, no, quite a bit more, actually. I think it's more like 15 screws, it looks like. Yeah, a lot of screws you have to take off just to get to the electronics, but luckily the bind button here for the XM Plus receiver was easily accessible. And they did include a little right angle adapter so that you could get access to the USB port that's kind of right there. And you can just stick that in there. You gotta be really careful with this thing because if you plug it in and then like you yank on the cord or whatever, it'll just rip the USB port off your flight controller and you'll have to get a new one. So um, yeah, be careful about that. You, you will have to be really cautious on how you use this. I can't stress that enough. I've seen a lot of guys on Facebook complaining about using these things on, on other models and they end up breaking their flight controller because they're not careful with this. So please be careful with this. So electronics in here, we have uh, the Rattel camera, my favorite camera, a very good camera. Um, same one that's on the Mega B as well. I believe it's got the same stack but an updated version of the Success F4 stack. It's a 20 by 20 F4 flight controller. This one has, I think, one extra UART than the Mega B that I had from earlier. And this one comes with 32 bit ESCs. I think they're 35 amp, I believe. And that's a major difference between this and the Taycan. Uh, the Taycan only comes with um, D Shot 600 ESCs or BLLS. Not a big deal now that we have, you know, um, updated firmware for BLLS ESCs, but still something worth noting. The Bumblebee does come with a 500 milliwatt video transmitter, and uh, I think that's also the same as the Mega B as well. And then in the back here, you have a little SMA adapter plus this little circular polarized stubby antenna. Um, I think for better video, especially in like a lot of like um, multipath, high multipath environments, you might fly this in. You probably want something a little bit more further away from the body so that the body doesn't block it. But it's something, uh, not a big deal, but it's something that I would do if I, if I were actually considering uh, redoing the model. Now they did send along this uh, GoPro mount. I think this is for Hero 7 and just has a fixed angle and it screws in. They include the screws, it screws into the three screws in the front here. And I don't have a Hero 7 so I didn't actually use this, but it, it does cost extra. You get these three printed parts for your uh, HD camera. Uh, I think they run about 10 bucks extra, so that's not included in the cost. And I just printed out this, um, my own little camera mount here uh, for the Session 5, and the camera kind of goes in like this here. 
Look, it's gonna take a little bit of time to put it on, so I'm gonna show you on camera, but that's essentially how it gets in here. And this is for vibration dampening. Um, it is kind of jiggly, like you can't, it's not very secure in terms of like the, the camera moving around. But when you're flying it, as long as you're flying it smooth and not doing like, you know, crazy acrobatics, um, the footage you get out of it is actually better than if you're using something that's hard mounted like this. Um, if you're using something like Real Steady Go, uh, especially for something like the Session 5 or the Hero 7 that has more vibration issues. This, I think people that are in the know about Cinewhoops, they kind of already know about this. Uh, you, probably, you guys are probably like thinking, what the hell is this thing and why is he using it? It's basically so it studies the, I use the real study go to study the footage, so it's nice and smooth. And so a lot of guys with Cinewhoops are using something like this. There's, if you go on Thingiverse and search for real study go mounts, there's literally dozens and dozens of designs kind of like this where basically the camera is mounted on this kind of like vibration, um, you know, vibration dampening type of situation here, so that the vibrations from the actual propellers and stuff don't get into the video footage that will end up messing up the stabilization footage. But anyway, you'll see the uh, stabilization footage at the end. It's quite, quite good. Now, when you compare it to the raw footage on, say, something where uh, you can look at, you know, uh, hard mounted something like on the on the, on the Dytone Taycan video, which I'll link down in the description. You'll see that there's a little bit of twitches, especially on the yaw axis and on the roll axis. So thing, little minor imperfections in that pid tune will come out in the video footage if you're not using Real Steady Go. All right, so let's get into the uh, differences here, and we're going to start off with the weight. And this one, the Bumblebee is coming in. And you're not, you guys aren't going to be able to see this on camera, I don't think. Uh, let's see if I can get that to show up. It's about 276 grams. And then if you compare that to the Mega B. Let's see here. Mega B is coming in at about 250 grams, so a little bit lighter. And the Taycan is going to be the heaviest of them all. And we're coming in at uh, 319 grams for the Taycan. So significantly heavier than the other two. And the Taycan's also got a wider, um, I guess, motor to motor distance. It's 142 millimeters for the Bumblebee and 158 millimeters for the Taycan. Um, obviously, I mentioned the easy difference between the Taycan and the Bumblebee being 32 bit on the Bumblebee and or BLS on the Taycan. Cameras are different as well. You get the Runcam Nano, like a cheaper camera on the Taycan, and you get the Rattel, a more expensive, better camera, in my opinion, on the Bumblebee. And you have only a 400 milliwatt video transmitter on the Taycan versus 500 milliwatts on the Bumblebee. Um, not much difference there. And like, you're not like you're going to be going kilometers away with this thing because the flight time is kind of limited. Um, but the, I think the biggest and most important difference between the two models here is the motors. Now, they do both come in 4S and 6S motor variants. Also, these are both the analog versions, but the frames will also support uh, DJI um, air units as well. So if you want to go digital with these, there's versions that are digital as well. Um, the frame designs are obviously different, so, uh, uh, and I think it has to do with the weight difference as well. The Taycan, as you saw in the, if you go and watch my Taycan video, that frame is modular. So the ducts and the, the center body are separate, so you can just take off the top plate and get access to your electronics, whereas the um, top plate is a like a complete unibody on the Bumblebee, so getting inside is going to be much more difficult on this model. Now again, the power system and the motors are another big difference, and this is where I think the Bumblebee is going to be a little better. At least for this type of flying, for cinema flying, where you're going to be flying kind of slow, you're going to be more on the low to mid end of the throttle versus the high end of the throttle. So I'm not talking about acrobatics here, I'm talking about nice, smooth, cinematic flying. And the 1507 motors are better for that. So you get the wider stator, it's a little bit lower, you get a little bit less top end. So obviously not going to be great for top speed. You're going to get more top end on the 1408 um, at 4000 kV versus the 1507 at 3600 kV. So lower kV, lower top end, also a, higher, a, a, a taller stator on the diatone 
So more and more, you get more top end on the Dietone. So in terms of like, if you want like more top speed, you're gonna get more of that on the Dietone versus the Bumblebee. But if you're going for like more slow cinematic flying, you're gonna get better control on the 15 size motor versus the 14 size motor. Now also, this is a lighter setup as well. So you, that also lends itself to having a little bit better control than on the Dietone. So these are sort of the differences and the advantages of the Bumblebee over the Dietone. I think that if you're flying this for more Cinewhip type of flying, indoor, slow, cinematic type of footage. Uh, you're gonna have more control with the 1507 motor than with the, the 1408 motor, in my opinion. Also, I think this motor is a little bit more efficient as well as the props and the lighter weight. You're gonna get more flight time for using the same battery. And I was using the, uh, the 850 uh, 4S battery. So I don't remember the exact flight time of the Diatone. I used the same battery in the Diatone. I think it was like three minutes and I got like more like three and a half maybe four minutes on the iFlight on the same 850. Now you can obviously go to a heavy battery like a 1100 or 1300 battery. You'll carry it no problem. It's just that it feels heavier. So, um, you know. Now, granted, all of these Cinewhips here, all three of them are basically pigs in my opinion. They're very heavy. It's just that, you know, it's just like, you know, the Mega B is probably the lightest of, the lightest pig of the three. And then you got the, the Bumblebee and then you got the Taycan being the heaviest. And obviously there's a whole bunch of other different Cinema models that are out there. There's another one that's coming out from Flywoo. I think that one will be pretty light as well. So we'll see how that compares. Um, but yeah, I, you know, in terms of having more control, I think having a 15 size motor and a little bit less weight, you're gonna have better control for doing more maneuvers, going through like tight spaces, that kind of thing. Um, whereas you'll, you're will you gonna have more top end and more power on the 14 weight motor on the diet test. So those are the big differences. Now, in terms of the pricing, I've checked a few times in the last few weeks, and they've already they they keep changing all the time. So just check the links. I think at one point the Dietone was cheaper than the Bumblebee, but now I think it's the other way around. Uh, but yeah, it's constantly fluctuating. So just check the links down below in terms of pricing. They're fairly close. And if you're worrying about uh, if you're wondering about the difference between the, the DJI versions, also the differences are about the same as well between the two models. Okay, so I think I've rambled on long enough about this guy. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you the flight footage. You guys can judge for yourself what you think of that footage compared to the Diatone footage from the other video. I'll link that down below as well. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. All right, so... As expected, this is pretty loud. And it's uh, a little bit a little bit windy today, so this is gonna get pushed around a little bit by the wind because of the obviously the huge ducks. And it does feel a bit on the heavy side, but not terrible. I think it's a little bit lighter than the diatone to take in. I'm not sure how this uh, GoPro mount's going to work out for me. Uh, I'm just hoping that uh, Real Steady Go will smooth out all the little vibrations. I think some people were complaining about that on the Take Hand video. I think how you mount the GoPro is really critical. There's just an XM Plus receiver on this guy, so I'm not going to be pushing like super long range here. So uh, this thing's pretty loud. Pretty good video. I think I'm at uh, 25 milliwatts. And uh, the Rattel camera is really amazing. It's amazing how much you can see. Almost quite like digital, but not quite there. interesting to see what the GoPro footage looks like of this area. Yeah, if I stay down low, the wind isn't as bad. If I go up higher, the wind's a little bit worse. This is a 
fair distance away, and it's it, I can still hear it. You can probably still hear it on the on the microphone. Pretty loud. These these little cine whoops. You can definitely fly this nice and smooth. Pretty good tune. Running, uh, yep, yeah, running towards the end of the battery and getting a low voltage warning at 14 volts. So I'm gonna go ahead and land it. About three minutes 30. I'm only running an 850 for us, so you're gonna get a longer flight time on a bigger battery. 